Welcome back. I'm Logan, your host for the Daily Bible Reading Podcast, where we are journeying through the Bible chronologically, taking it one day at a time. Today is day number 171, and we're going to be finishing the book of Ecclesiastes today. We're looking at chapters 7 through 12, but before we begin, let's pray. Today's prayer comes from the book The Valley of Vision by Arthur Bennett. This prayer is entitled, Shortcomings. O living God, I bless thee that I see the worst of my heart as well as the best of it, that I can sorrow for those sins that carry me from thee, that it is thy deep and dear mercy to threaten punishment so that I may return, pray, and live. My sin is to look on my faults and be discouraged, or to look on my good and be puffed up. I fall short of thy glory every day by spending hours unprofitably, by thinking that the things I do are good when they are not done to thy end, nor spring from the rules of thy word. My sin is to fear what never will be. I forget to submit to thy will and fail to be quiet there. But scripture teaches me that thy active will reveals a steadfast purpose on my behalf, and this quietens my soul and makes me love thee. Keep me always in the understanding that saints mourn more for sin than other men, for when they see how great is thy wrath against sin, and how Christ's death alone pacifies that wrath, that makes them mourn the more. Help me to see that although I am in the wilderness, it is not all briars and barrenness. I have bread from heaven, streams from the rock, light by day, fire by night, thy dwelling place, and thy mercy seat. I am sometimes discouraged by the way, and though winding and trying, it is safe and short. Death dismays me, but my great high priest stands in its waters and will open me a passage, and beyond is a better country. While I live, let my life be exemplary, and when I die, May my end be peace. Today we want to pray for the 41,000 Marego Gubden in Russia. The isolated mountain village of Gubden has always been known for its desire to impose Sharia law or Islamic law. In the early 2000s, the Caucasus Emirate, an umbrella terrorist group who wanted to expel Russian power from the North Caucasus, developed out of this city of Gubden. The people of Gubden and the other 14 villages in the area were placed under the strict military control of Russia. No one in Gubden has joined the militant underground in the past few years. But with no government help, they do not have schools or functioning roads, and electricity and medical care are very limited. The people used to live off livestock farming, and they were famous for their fine produce. But currently, Gubden's residents drive trucks full of fruit and vegetables or work in the stone quarry. The Marego are open to visitors, which gives believers an opportunity to spend time with them and encourage them to listen to radio Bible programs and answer questions about the living Lord. We pray that believers would befriend the Marego and help them to see the hope, healing, and new life that are found only by knowing the living Lord and His Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for a series of Discovery Bible Studies to spread throughout their region. We ask that you do it for the fame of the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, I've got my Bible open. I hope you're ready to go. Let's read. Chapter 7 A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of face the heart is made glad. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It's better for a man to hear the rebuke of the wise than to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot so is the laughter of the fools. This also is vanity. Surely oppression drives the wise into madness, and a bribe corrupts the heart. 
Better is the end of a thing than its beginning, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not quick in your spirit to become angry, for anger lodges in the heart of fools. Say not, Why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, an advantage to those who see the sun. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money, and the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. Consider the work of God, who can make straight what he has made crooked. In the day of prosperity, be joyful, and in the day of adversity, consider. God has made the one as well as the other, so that man may not find out anything that will be after him. In my vain life I have seen everything. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in evil doing. Be not overly righteous, and do not make yourself too wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Be not overly wicked, neither be a fool. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you should take hold of this, and from that withhold not your hand, for the one who fears God shall come out from both of them. Wisdom gives strength to the wise man more than ten rulers who are in a city. Surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Do not take to heart all the things that people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. Your heart knows that many times you yourself have cursed others. All this I have tested by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which has been far off and deep, very deep, who can find it out? I turned my heart to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the scheme of things, and to know the wickedness of folly and the foolishness that is madness. And I find something more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and whose hands are fetters. He who pleases God escapes her, but the sinner is taken by her. Behold, this is what I found, says the preacher, while adding one thing to another to find the scheme of things, which my soul has sought repeatedly but I have not found. One man among a thousand I found, but a woman among all these I have not found. See, this alone I found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. Chapter 8 Who is like the wise, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his face is changed. I say, keep the king's command, because of God's oath to him. Be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil cause, for he does whatever he pleases. For the word of the king is supreme, and who may say to him, What are you doing? Whoever keeps a command will know no evil thing, and the wise heart will know the proper time as the just way. For there is a time and a way for everything, although man's trouble lies heavy on him, for he does not know what is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? No man has power to retain the spirit, or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. All this I observed while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun, when man had power over man to his hurt. Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place, and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This also is vanity. Because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be well with those who fear God, because they fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, neither will he prolong his days like a shadow, because he does not fear before God. There is a vanity that takes place on earth, that there are righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked, and there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this is also vanity, and I commend joy, for man has nothing better under the sun but to eat and drink and be joyful, for this will go with him in his toil through the days of his life that God has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom, and to see the busyness that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep? Then I saw all the work of God, that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. 
Chapter 9 But all this I laid to heart, examining it all, how the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hands of God. Whether it is love or hate, man does not know. Both are before him. It is the same for all, since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and to him who does not sacrifice. As the good one is, so is the sinner, and he who swears is as he who shuns an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. Also, the hearts of the children of man are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that they go to the dead. But he who is joined with all the living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. Go, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white, let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. Again, I saw that under the sun the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligence, nor favor to those with knowledge. But time and chance happen to them all, for man does not know his time like fish that are taken in an evil net, and like birds that are caught in a snare. So the children of man are snared at an evil time, when it suddenly falls upon them. I have also seen this example of wisdom under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it and besieged it, building great siege works against it. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no one remembered that poor man. But I say that wisdom is better than might, though the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of the wise heard in quiet are better than the shouting of a ruler among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Chapter 10 Dead flies make the perfumer's ointment give off a stench, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart inclines him to the right, but a fool's heart to the left. Even when the fool walks on the road, he lacks sense, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. If the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place, for calmness will lay great offenses to rest. There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, as it were an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in many high places, and the rich sit in a low place. I have seen slaves on horses, and princes walking on the ground like slaves. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and a serpent will bite him who breaks through a wall. He who quarries stones is hurt by them, and he who splits logs is endangered by them. If the iron is blunt, and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength, but wisdom helps one succeed. If the serpent bites before it is charmed, there is no advantage to the charmer. The words of a wise man's mouth win him favor, but the lips of a fool consume him. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is evil madness. A fool multiplies words, though no man knows what is to be, and who can tell him what will be after him. The toil of a fool wearies him, for he does not know the way to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Happy are you, O land, when your king is the son of the nobility, and your princes feast at the proper time, for strength and not for drunkenness. Through sloth the roof sinks in, and through indolence the house leaks. Bread is made for laughter, and wine gladdens life, and money answers everything. Even in your thoughts do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom curse the rich, for a bird of the air will carry your voice or some winged creature tell the matter. Chapter 11 
Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, or even to eight, for you know not what disaster may happen on earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So if a person lives many years, let him rejoice in them all, but let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Remove vexation from your heart and put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Chapter 12 Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because they are few and those who look through the windows are dimmed and the doors on the street are shut, when the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails, because man is going to his eternal home, and the mourners go about in the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the Spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. Besides being wise, the preacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying and arranging many proverbs with great care. The preacher sought to find words of delight, and uprightly he wrote words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, beware of anything beyond these. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. If you're looking for encouragement for life's journey, a better understanding of the Bible, or an honest look at Scripture, check out the Christ-Centered Journey. I'm your host, Dan Shipton, and I'd like to invite you to check us out Mondays through Fridays, we air new programs. It's a daily podcast that's built around building one another up as Christ followers in this journey we call life. So why don't you join us by looking us up on your podcasting host for the Christ-Centered Journey. All right, well, welcome to Solomon's TED Talk. <laughs> Maybe... You came into Ecclesiastes expecting to hear from the wisest man in all the world, and you were excited because you thought maybe he'll be able to bring everything together and make sense of it all, you know, provide some secret that you haven't yet uncovered. But the first thing that he says right out of the gate is that everything is vanity, and he repeats that over and over through this book. And so maybe at this point, as we're done reading, you are leaving and you're processing what you heard, thinking you must be missing something. I mean, Solomon is the wisest man who ever lived. But what if he doesn't actually believe that everything is vanity? But in order to get us to understand that, 
he has to tell us that everything is vanity. Remember, Ecclesiastes is wisdom literature, like Proverbs and like Job that we've read before. It's designed to make the reader wise. And as any great artist or author knows, you don't make people wise simply by giving them facts to memorize. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, we read, It is the glory of God to conceal things, but it is the glory of kings to search things out. So in this book, Solomon tells us that during his search, he came to the conclusion that under the sun, everything was the same, whether it was wisdom, pleasure, toil, wealth, work, success, or living wisely and well. None of it could make sense of the world under the sun. Nothing could give a point to life before death said that it was done. While there are brief mentions of God in the book, his ultimate justice and his sovereignty, those truths are left above the sun. They're never brought down to Solomon's reality. And that is the true vanity that the preacher's words help us to name. That unless we look above the sun for answers everything will be in vain. For if we're to remain under the sun, there's only one solution that the preacher gives to everyone. He tells them to simply enjoy their work, enjoy their food, enjoy their lives before they are done. Because the answer that they seek is vain and absurd. There there simply isn't an answer if you are only looking under the sun. However, Solomon is not the only voice found in Ecclesiastes' lines. A compiler wrote a conclusion to his words, like an epilogue or a reply, and the author's advice is summed up in one sentence right at the very end of the book. It says, Fear God and obey His commandments. Those are the words that should be stirring in our hearts as we wrestle walking away from Solomon's disenchantment that we need God and his word to know how to live in this world and how to understand it. For many of us, thinking about God doesn't really relieve any of the vanity. It's easy for us to get stuck believing that the pointlessness of this world will always win. I mean, after all, it has always won. We find it impossible to not get stuck only looking under the sun. And that's because above everything, The only thing that can truly cut through all the vanity is that the God who is above the sun entered our reality in the person of Jesus Christ, who is God the Son. Jesus came and removed the restriction that Solomon had applied to his experiment. He brought heaven to earth to bring us life and to show us how to live it. Solomon said that knowledge is pointless. But Jesus says that knowing him is a treasure. Solomon says that our desires can't be fulfilled. But Jesus says that he is our ultimate pleasure. Solomon says that riches never satisfy. But Jesus said that his provisions are better. Solomon said that all of our toil is in vain. But Jesus says that our work in him will last forever. You see, Solomon tried to prove our questions are unanswerable. But Jesus came to show that he is the answer. Because Solomon says that everything dies. But the gospel of Jesus says that those who are in him will never die. So what's the meaning of life? Fear God and keep his commandments. And we don't do this by chasing after the wind, but by running after Jesus. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been encouraging to you. If so, please let me know by visiting the links that you find under the Connect With Us section in the show notes. I'm a simple man and I could use the encouragement. If you've been blessed enough that you would like to support the podcast, I would greatly appreciate that as well. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash dbrpodcast to make either a one-time gift or to sign up for a monthly recurring membership gift. Until tomorrow, keep reading and keep worshiping.